O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Where true love is dwelling, God is dwelling there. Love's own loving presence, love does ever share. Love of Christ has made us out of many one. In our midst is dwelling God's eternal Son. Give him joyful welcome, Love him and revere. Cherish one another with a love sincere. It was you who saved us, Lord. We will praise your name without ceasing. We heard with our own is O God. Our fathers have told us a story of the things you did in their days, you yourself in days long ago, to plant them, you uproot of the nations, to let them spread, you laid people slow. No sword of their own won the land, no arm of their own brought them victory, it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. It was you, my King, my God, who granted victory to Jacob. Through you we beat down our foes, in your name we trampled our aggressors. For it was not in my bow that I trusted, nor yet was I saved by my sword. It was you who saved us from our foes, it was you who put our foes to shame. All day long our boast was in God, and we praised your name without ceasing. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. It was you who saved us, Lord. We will praise your name without ceasing. Spare us, Lord. Do not let your people be put to shame. Yet now you have rejected us, disgraced us. You no longer go forth with our armies. You make us retreat from the foe, and our enemies plunder as it will. You make us like sheep for the slaughter, and scatter us among the nations. You sell your own people for nothing, and make no profit by the sale. You make us the taunt of our neighbours, the laughing stock of all who are near. Among the nations you make us a byword, among the peoples a thing of derision. All day long my disgrace is before me, my face is covered with shame. At the voice of the taunt of the scoffer, at the sight of the foe and avenger, give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son Jesus Christ the Lord. To the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, 
both now and forever. Amen. Spare us, Lord. Do not let your people be put to shame. Arise, Lord. Redeem us because of your love. This befell us, though we had not forgotten you, though we had not been false to your covenant, though we had not withdrawn our hearts, though our feet had not strayed from your path, yet you have crushed us in the place of sorrows and covered us with the shadow of death. Had we forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out hands to another God, but not God have found this out? He who knows the secrets of the heart, it is for you we face death all day long, and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O Lord, why do you sleep? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face from us and forget our oppression and misery? For we are brought down low to the dust. Our body lies prostrate on the earth. Stand up and come to our help. Redeem us because of your love. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Arise, Lord. Redeem us because of your love. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to those elders carried off into exile, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had led away into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah had left Jerusalem with the Queen Mother, the eunuchs, the nobility of Judah and Jerusalem, and the blacksmiths and metal workers. The letter was entrusted to Elisha, son of Shaphan, and to Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, had sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The letter said, The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says this to all the exiles, deported from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses, settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Choose wives for your sons, find husbands for your daughters so that these can bear sons and daughters in their turn. You must increase there and not decrease. Work for the good of the country to which I have exiled you. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, since on its welfare yours depends. For the Lord says this, Only when the seventy years granted to Babylon are over will I visit you and fulfill my promise in your favour by bringing you back to this place. I know the plans I have in mind for you. It is the Lord who speaks. Plans for peace, not disaster. Reserving a future full of hope for you. Then when you call to me and come to plead with me, I will listen to you. When you seek me, you shall find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will let you find me. It is the Lord who speaks. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have dispersed you. It is the Lord who speaks. I will bring you back to the place from which I exiled you. 
Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. Whoever trusted in the Lord and was put and was put to shame. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. The beginning of the sermon of Pope Saint Leo the Great on the Beatitudes. Dearly beloved, when our Lord was preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing various infirmities throughout Galilee, the renown of his powers had spread to the whole of Syria and great crowds flocked to the heavenly physician from everywhere in Judea. Since faith impeded by human ignorance is slow to accept what it does not see and to hope for what it is unacquainted with, these men had to be strengthened with divine instruction and spurred on by physical benefits and visible miracles. In this way, they would not doubt that his teaching brought salvation when they experienced his gracious power. So our Lord, to replace external healing with interior remedies and to attend to their souls after healing their bodies, withdrew to a neighbouring mountain away from the surrounding crowds. He called the apostles to himself to fill them with more sublime teaching from that mysterious place. From the very nature of the place and of his deeds, he showed that he was the one who once had deigned to speak to Moses. Then indeed, he spoke with more awesome justice, but now with more blessed mercy in fulfilment of what had been promised by the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts. So he who had spoken to Moses spoke also to the apostles and the swiftly writing hand of the word established the decrees of the New Testament in the hearts of his disciples. There was no surrounding thickness of cloud as on the former occasion, nor were the people frightened from, the approaching, from approaching the mountain by dreadful sounds and flashes of lightning. But the calmness of his speech was evident to those present. In this way, the harshness of the law would be taken away by the gentleness of grace and the spirit of adoption would remove servile dread. Christ's sayings then proclaim the nature of his teaching. Those who wish to achieve everlasting blessedness may recognise the stages by which to make the most favourable progress. Blessed, he says, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It might well be uncertain to which poor the truth was referring if he had said, blessed are the poor, and added nothing as to how one should understand the condition of the poor. Merely that poverty, which many suffer through severe cruel necessity, might have seemed to suffice for meriting the kingdom of heaven. But when he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, he shows that the kingdom of heaven will be given to those whom loneliness of heart, rather than lack of means, commends. Mark my teaching, O my people, listen to the words I am to speak. I will tell you a story with a meaning, I will expound the riddle of the things past. Listen to the words I am to speak. Let us pray. Father of might and power, every good and perfect gift comes down to us from you. Implant in our hearts the love of your name, increase our zeal for your service, nourish what is good in us, 
and tended with watchful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.